Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the All-Star Wrestling Review Series. We've got uh, a bunch of these added on the Peacock Network now, and enjoying that will be a good deal here. Still going to get back to the NXT series, but we'll take a short break to add to old school stuff. September 17th, 1975 is our run beginning here, and needless to say, that is the beginning of... Um, uh, what they have available. Hopefully they add some stuff from uh, the first few years of the program. They probably won't because obviously having stuff from the 70s is rare or more rare than most of us would like. Anyway, we open with the, um, the ring announcer run here. And I mean, ultimately... I'm a huge fan, <clears throat> huge f fan of kind of uh, the, I guess, what you, what would now be considered old school. I mean, before I was born, we're talking 45, 46 years ago, some of this stuff um, is here. And I, I love it because at the end of the day, you're, you're working about, you're working with just tremendous stuff that um you know you can certainly get to a you can get to a level of understanding that's just phenomenal right and um you can get you can get to a place where you know these these television programs are iconic but also proof that you didn't need or proof that you didn't that you don't require uh, wrestling that is, you know, spot, spot, spot all over the place. I'd rather watch guys uh, apply holds that actually count for something than a guy jump all over the place and accomplish nothing for, you know, five minutes of a match or whatever the case may be. Anyway, as we go forward here, uh, we'll, we will see that, Interviews were a major part of the program here, too. September 13th, once again, 1975, is the program of the moment. And uh, superstar Billy Graham, who is a couple of years away from his um, win run um, as it relates to kind of moving forward and winning the world championship. Graham not in that, in that role as of yet does end up getting there not too terribly long from now, but uh, without a doubt, certainly something worth taking a, a, a piece look at for lack of a better run there. Uh, Vince McMahon and, uh, and Anto Antonita Rocker are here. Um, and McMahon conducts a ringside interview with, with Graham and the Grand Wizard after his match. Uh, he wants to know what it's like to interview a guy who is one of the best in the world and also all the boyfriends and husbands wanted to be. And Graham says they're all jealous. He says that the, the WWF, three W's, champion in Bruno San Martino is sitting at home in his easy chair, overweight, and has been watching to keep or wanting to keep Graham away from being on the East Coast. Um, just phenomenal in that sense. Uh, the match itself with uh, Tom uh, sent, uh, Tom Staten uh, is a bear hug win. Um, and then you see um, Graham run his opponent into the corner several times. But the match itself, you know, by today's standards would be boring as all heck, but by actual wrestling standards, I think has value. Um, also, Billy Graham, who could get, could get, could sell ice to an Eskimo and who could get water from a rock in a lot of ways, has an amazing propensity for posing and doing what he needs to do to get things done. Um, very basic punch kick sends him into the buckle. Goes for a bear hug and cinches up. Now, in that moment, you wonder, does this hurt? And eventually, I mean, you know, 
the use of Grand Wizard Ernie Roth, who was probably one of the better um, managers at the time anywhere in the country in terms of inciting, for lack of a better term, mini riots, I suppose, we are there. We then move to another manager, this time Captain Lou Albano, presenting the um, Blackjacks, Blackjack Mulligan and, and Lanza against Buddy Porter and Buzz Sawyer in a non title match just after five minutes. Lanza pins Porter with the claw. Post-match, Mulligan tosses so uh, Sawyer to the floor. Uh, and this is not the same Buzz Sawyer as becomes famous in the in the 80s. I actually do enjoy the, the championship belts of this era. Um, they look like championship belts. They don't look goofy like the stuff now. Um, bigger is not better. Um, they look like you'd, you'd want to fight to have these things. Uh, of course, Blackjack Mulligan, the, the father of Barry Windham, the grandfather of uh, Bo Dallas and uh, Bray Wyatt. Uh, I love the fact, too, that even in this, I mean, they're, they're cinching up on a wrist lock and then punching at the, at the arm and the wrist. Something as basic as trying to get some sort of reaction out of punching or trying to injure a body part is such a lost art here in 2021 uh, and it doesn't have to be in the sense that I know a lot of people say well it's you know it's different time in wrestling and all that but the fact of the matter is there's still value to the process of trying to find um, a way to make every move matter and in MMA what do you do you work a body part um, I think working a body parts has been lost in the in the high spot mentality that exists today. Um, and obviously the blackjacks are not uh, showing this in 75. But anyway, as we move forward, as mentioned earlier, there is a, um, there is a uh, interview with Billy Graham, which we covered earlier just in the way it laid out. And then we move to a next match. That next match is uh, Baron Mikhail Sakuna uh, beating uh, Manuel, uh, I'm sorry, Manuel Marrera, uh, which, I don't know, three and a half minutes after a couple knee drops across the throat. Mikhail Sakuna been around since the 50s and certainly gets everything he possibly can Um which is which is there, and it's you know, um, Mikel Sakuna also manages to go into the 80s and has at least some cachet with fans, especially in the Northeast, more so the uh, Philadelphia and New York markets. He tries to take his man down, flips him over, some um, snap mares and the like. Snap mares are done at the point where, you know, you hear the ring rattle. And, and that's another thing, too. Rings now sound almost uh, mics to the point of, of no return, but they don't sound as fearsome. And then, we, again, as mentioned, two knee drops from Mikel Sakuna, and he gets a victory here. We then move on to uh, another match in the Wonder of Things as we see... Um, a man wearing a sombrero here and uh, ultimately uh, that individual ends up becoming um, you know kind of wrapped up in the match so to speak we see uh, Francisco uh, Francisco Flores and Frank Monty to a double count out 602 uh, they're fighting in the ring or on the ring apron after the um, contest. The match is pretty much, by the standards of the day, a brawl. Not exactly the best of situations, not exactly the best of matches, but at the same time, for the day and time, uh, you know, punch kick, punch kick, basic stuff. Neither guy gets a real advantage. Um, but, but again, each move matters. We see both guys kind of take advantages of each other. A modified camel clutch becomes part of the um, battle between the two. 
go to the outside. The ropes are a bit more saggy than we would see by today's standards. Also, a guy getting tied in the ropes, the, the top two, and kneeling on the bottom rope is just an interesting run. Um, again, they, they brawl on the apron, and there we go. Your final match of the day after both of these guys go to a double count in just over six minutes is uh, Fred Blassie. So all three managers, the, tri the triad of the Grand Wizard, Cap Captain Lou Albano, and Fred Blassie are here. Uh, this particular foray is Blassie presenting Waldo Von Erich and... Um, um, Waldo Von Erich, Buzzing, Bugsy McGraw, uh, facing off against Luis Sardin and Tony Parisi. Tony Parisi, the former tag team partner of Captain Lou Albano. Uh, they go, um, you know, Andre the Giant comes out in their corner with combating interference from Alba Albano and Lucy, uh, and, uh, uh, Blassie. Andre enters the ring and attacks Blassie as the show goes off the air, banging heads together. Parisi and Von Erich are fighting with them in the ring. They basically run probably about um, 10 minutes of match time here. Parisi and Sardan kind of are the guys of note. I did not know that Bugsy McGraw was here at the time. Of course, my exposure to McGraw is primarily in the world-class territory um, uh, from the early to mid-80s at the time. And uh, uh, if you haven't checked that out, over 300 episodes of our Mid-South series, so worth checking out there. Um, so glad to see all the old-school stuff returning to the Peacock Network after the WWE Network transfer. They're saying 17,000 hours of stuff, and we'd love to have 15,000 pieces of content for you eventually anyway. Um, Captain Lou Albano is satisfied with uh, what's going on for his team. And, I mean, it's here. Uh, match continues into a what appears to be a second fall. Everybody continues the fight. Um, and, again, Albano and Blassie kind of working together. It's ironic because the managers usually didn't at that point. The interplay that would come into managers in the late 80s, early 90s isn't here in 75. Andre coming out and interfering in things right before the close of the match is here. Atomic drops, a common move for the baby faces, not so common for the heel for the heels at the time. Uh, and of course, even even the um, Bob Backlund, who becomes your world champion a few years later in 1978, uh, going after that maneuver pretty pretty ostensibly here. Anyway, we will go we'll be back with more right after this.